Okay, so today's video is another one of those where I don't actually know what I'm doing. Um, I do quite a lot of work for this guy and he's come over with two or three jobs and one of them is to make some new shackles for um, I think it's a pony cart or horse cart. Um, but the material is an unusual shape. It's it's sort of half round. It's rounded on one side and flat on the other, but it's not exactly half round. Um, I know how to make it, but it's quite long winded and I haven't got the right die for it. So this video is making a tool to make the material and then making the shackle. So we're going to start off using a bottom hardy that I made in a previous video. I'll put a link to it up there somewhere um, if you haven't already seen it. Um, and once we've made it then we'll go on to actually making the shackle. It's quite a long video this one and it did take me a long while to, do, to actually do it with having to make the tool as well. And I've now got another four to make once I've made this one I'm using this one as a like a prototype to, to make sure I'm doing all the right things and as you'll see towards the end I actually I'm not so I learn from it which is what prototypes are all about I suppose so anyway have a watch hope you enjoy it and let's get on with it okay so this is what I've got to try and reproduce but I've got to make it longer this is what he's given me. And I don't know if you can see, it's quite unusual rounded material. Square on the inside, very round on the outside. It's about 16mm uh, or 58 wide and about 9 16 thick. And it's got to be inch longer thread on each end. So, what I'm going to do this is the uh, swage, bottom swage I made in a previous video, I'll put a link up somewhere and I'm just basically going to heat it up and hammer a bit of this 16mm round into it and see what happens. So let's get it warm. I'm just going to leave that in there, see if I can find a decent pair of tongs to fit it, which these don't. Alright, we've got our warm. Now first off I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit because when I made this I literally was just demonstrating how to make a, a sort of a bottom swage. I didn't really finish it off properly so it's a bit ragged, a bit rough, covered in hammer marks so I'm just going to tidy it up before we start just make life a bit easier if it's all nice and level and relatively square. Put a little bit of a rounded end edge on the job. Or chamfer. Alright. See if I can get it out now. So these yeah, that came out fairly easily. Don't really see that, but that's much better than it was when it went in there. Let's see if we can get it warm again. It doesn't actually take all that long once you've got a decent heat in it. Heating it back up again is relatively quickly. I 
I do have a bottom hardy with a 16mm or 5.8 groove in it, but it's just not deep enough, nowhere near deep enough. This has really got to go in quite a long way. It's almost got to go in the full depth of the material. Let's cool that out. And I'm hoping that if I judge it right, the 16mm or 5, 5.8 round will swell and fill out the gap so that it's basically I'm making the job out of just a piece of 5.8 round or 5.8 16mm round, whatever you like to call it. So I don't have to do too much altering of material. That's the whole idea anyway, because he said that it doesn't have to be exact as long as it's somewhere near and to get it exact would mean an odd size material to start with or you've got to do a lot of grinding, uh, you know, mucking about with it. If I can get this damn thing out. So these tongs don't really fit. That might help. That's got it. Bung it back in the fire. I don't know if you can see that, it's sort of coming. You can see I didn't make a particularly good <laughs> bottom hardy when I made it. Originally, the stalks are quite a bit off centre. But then again, that was another thing I don't do very often. I'm all a bit hit and miss. All right, I've got my bigger hammer out now. See if we can give it some beans. Some of the scale off. I don't really want to hammer too much scale back into it. You can see how it does actually move it relatively easily, although I am giving it some with this big hammer. Let's call that out again. You don't worry that this is deforming. You know, once it's got a little bit flat on the top, I'll move on to another piece. This is like the sacrificial piece of iron. It's coming on. Still needs to be a bit deeper, I think. But as you can see, it sort of bowed it down in the middle. So the sides are sort of pointing upwards. We'll try and keep them sort of flat. struggle to get it out again. That's it. I was hoping when I took this job on that uh, I would already have a, a tool to do this because he's in a bit of a hurry. Of course I've been quite busy and not having a, the material, I'd had to go and buy the 5.8 or some 5.8 round this morning to do this job with. Now I've got to make the tool, so it's all going to be a bit long winded. We'll go on the price of the job though, unfortunately. So now I'm just moving up the bar. So where I've already flattened it, I'm just moving back a bit onto a fresh bit. I'm giving it some. It must be almost there. Now start another fresh bit because that was getting a bit too hot to hang on to. A bit close to home, or close to my hand. 
have a little look at that. Looks pretty good. So the only way to tell is going to be to try the original shackle in it. And I don't want to burn. Oh, there you are. I'm going to burn the paint off. But yeah, it's not far off. It ain't far off at all. A little bit more, I think. I like doing work for this guy because he comes up with some really odd jobs. I say odd jobs, unusual jobs. And, uh, oh, that won't help. I have to sort of put my thinking cap on a bit for some of them. Luckily, a lot of them he brings patterns for. But I still sometimes have to think how to go about it. I'm just going to try and flatten this top off because, like I say, they, they're bowing the wrong way. Because when you're hammering your material in there, you don't want those sticking up in, in, in your way of your hammer. So I'm just going to flatten them off a bit and then I shall stick the round back in there to tidy it up. there. I'm almost going to call that a day. This one, what I'm trying to achieve here is I'm trying to close it up to get the, the um, edges at the top fairly sharp because at the moment they're still a little bit rounded um, and when I hammer the material into that if they're rounded you're going to get sort of a, a lip so I'm trying to get them reasonably sharp I think I'm still going to get a lip anyway but if we can sort of avoid it as much as possible by making these edges reasonably square or reasonably sharp. Let's get this out again and get it warm again. As you can see, I'm still in my shorts, but the temperature has suddenly overnight dropped again. There we go. That's just had a little wire brush up. And that now is pretty good. See, I've just chamfered the front and the back, and I'm going to try and clean off all that scale. Yeah, as I say, the temperature's dropped overnight by 10 degrees, so it's really pleasant today to work in. It's only sort of like 23, 24, something like that. Um, it's really comfortable after the 30s that we've had. Which is why I decided to get the forge going. It's just been almost unbearable in here. I've got no windows, just one door, so I don't don't even get a blow through. See, that's what I was doing, just chamfering off the edges so that when you hammer the material through, you don't get any sharp sort of steps in it. I think that is going to be about it. You can see there from that shot how I've been working my way along the material just 
turned it round. Get another relatively fresh bit. Because I want the last little bit here that I'm doing to be sort of uh, the exact right size and shape. I don't want to use a distorted bit of bar on it and end up finding that the bit of bar that comes out is the wrong shape. So I'll just give that a clean up. Quick go over with the wire brush. Have to be careful wire brushing when something's this hot because it will round everything off and it can actually take quite a lot of material off so you just have to go very gentle when it's that hot I just wanted to get as much of the scale off it as I could so let's cool it out and have a little look So whilst that's in there cooling, all right, there we go. I cooled it out. It's nice and smooth in there. You can see how deep it is. It's, I say, it's almost the the depth of the uh, 16 mil 58 round. See that sits in there nicely, flush with the top. So I'm hoping, once I hammer my material in there, it should be right. But as you can see, they've still got that slope, so I'm going to have to grind this um, to get rid of that slope. So it goes the opposite way. Slope's away rather than in. Let's go over to the grinder. Give it a bit of a go. Now this belt isn't very new. I've been doing a lot of work for my friend who does the white line equipment and I use this a lot on his job. I could do with putting a new belt on but I'm a bit loath to do it just for this. We'll see if this will take it off enough. Actually it reminds me I must order some new belts. I think I've only got one left. It's getting a bit warm. Better. I think what I'm going to do. Try and do it on the flat, see if that does any good. So I'll open the top up now. For some reason it seems to be taking more off. Well I suppose because it's doing both sides at once, but it works better on the top here. It's getting mighty hot, mighty quick. I can't remember what I made this swage out of, whether it was just an ordinary bit of mild steel that I had kicking about or whether it was something a little bit different. It, it, judging by the sparks, it's just a bit of rough old mild steel, which is perfectly alright for this sort of a job, don't get me wrong. Um, perfectly alright. I dare say. If I look back at the video, which I, as I say I'll put a link to, I might be able to tell. I might even say in the video. It was some time ago. Look at those lovely sparks. Keeps getting rather hot even with my gloves on. It's 
one out of the picture, just cooling her out again. And some of you might wonder why I'm moving it all around, not just sort of plonking it in one place. And that's simply because the base under the belt is a layer of it's like graphite tape I suppose you'd call it, it's about eighth of an inch thick um, it's the same stuff that I put behind my platen on the other belt grinder, the one I made um, and if you keep this thing in the same spot it wears it away in that spot so you get lumps in the in your belt so when you try and do something flat it's actually not flat because you've got great big lumps underneath where you've worn away the the belt or the the the, the uh, graphite tape underneath anyway you can see that it's nice and flat now and the uh, bit of bar runs through there nicely so let's get a bit hot just like that and we'll give it a go see what happens Now I'm using the rounded end of the hammer because what I want to try and do is push the excess material out to the edges um, to fill in that gap to make the the top square. Um, I don't want it to go longer, I want it to go wider. So that's why I'm sort of trying to push the edges out. Otherwise, as I say, I don't really want nasty little so you can see there that's why I wanted those tops flat because if I hadn't done I wouldn't have got the hammer in there so it seems to be working quite well so far so you can see it's sort of pushing out to the edges is what I was trying to achieve. You can even see sort of towards the back there there's a a bit of a lip appeared which isn't a problem. I'd rather have a little bit of a lip that I can grind off than not have enough pushed out to the edges. Just straighten it up a little bit. I don't know if you can really see or appreciate how it's worked, but it is working. I'm pleased with it actually. Very pleased with it. It's going to take me a while to do another four of these, but if the weather stays slightly cooler like it is now, it won't be too much of a hardship. Oh for a power hammer. I can whip these along in no time at all. Never mind, when I get my bigger shop. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that, that's coming out nicely. See that little lip on the edge there? That'll grind off. That's no bother at all. So, carry on. See if we can get the rest of it done. pulled that tool out because it's starting to get hot although you can probably go for a, quite a long while before it would actually have any effect on the tool itself and as you can see the longer it gets <laughs> the harder it gets to control it's going all over the shop and it's best to keep it under control if you can because once it gets out of hand 
you can get it back but you end up with lots of hammer marks in it trying to straighten it out so if you can keep it straightish from the word go alright so it's taken me a while so I cut out the last little bit but we're there you can just see there's a nice little lip down one side and not down the other if you can see that it's a there's that lip which we'll grind off but I'm pleased about that I'd rather have that as say I think I said it before than not have the edge square which this will be by the time I grind that off so I worked out that I re need roughly 14 inches which is there so I've actually got plenty so I'm just going to mark that and we'll cut that off because what we've got to do is make these ends about 12mm I'm going to do it, half inch 12mm or something like that on each end to put the thread on. The originals I think are 7 16th but I haven't got a 7 16th die, um, I haven't got any 7 16th nuts, I haven't even got uh, a decent half inch Whitworth die or even a half inch UNC. I've got a knackered old half inch so I'm going to use 12 mil which is a relatively nice new die so it should cut a decent thread and I've got plenty of 12 mil nuts and at the end of the day although it's on an old carton and everything's imperial I don't think anyone's going to notice so I'm just taking that burr off that little flange that came out Tidying it up with the flap disc first and then the sanding disc. Just give it a quick wipe. Turn it over and do the same the other side, although there isn't really much of a lip the other side, but I'm just going to tidy it up anyway. Just so that both sides are relatively clean and the same sort of shape I suppose years ago when they made this sort of material you'd have a couple of blokes with sledges and the governor would be pulling it out of the fire running it through the die a couple of lads striking have this done in no time But being Billy No Mates, I don't have no one to strike for me. Just cleaning a bit of the scale off the back there, off that flat side. That's all I'm really trying to do is get the scale off so it looks a little bit neater. When it's bent, that's going to be the inside that's going to be against the I'm not sure if that's going to be against wood or, or steel. But uh, anyway, I want it fairly tidy. I don't want to take out, that's why I'm going to use the wire brush on this side. I don't want to take out all the, the marks of the scale marks, the hammer marks. I don't want it to look factory made. You know, I could quite easily have. Um, you know, got someone to machine to mill a piece of bar, a piece of bright bar, but it, it just wouldn't be the same. You know, this is it's handmade, and that's what uh, is wanted for this job. So, let me just take my focus off. I've put a mark at each end, I think it's two and a quarter inches each end. There, that's the distance I want to draw down for the threads. So let's get it in the fire. See if we can do that. I think I'll use my other hammer for this. It's got a square edge on it where I want to define the start and finish. So just 
see my mark. And I'm just going to take this down a little bit by hand. I'm going to use my guillotine tool um, for two reasons. One, I haven't used it for ages and I thought it would be quite fun to use. And secondly, it will give, give a nice finish. It will give an even size. Um, and hopefully it will give the same size on both ends. So I'm just taking it down roughly. And then we can get the uh, proper tool on it. Need to be a bit careful here because I'm feel like I'm going a little bit too far. But I'm getting it too small for the the uh, the tool, but we'll see. This is my old one that I've made a long, long time ago. There has been a, a new one since. I'll put a link to that somewhere as well. Now this is brilliant for making a little shoulder. Nice little transition between the, I was going to say square and round, but the odd shape and, and the round. And as I say, it can't make an odd size. It has to be that size. If you hammer it until it, you know, the jaws hit, that's the right size. Cracking little tool. I don't know why I don't use it more often, actually. Alright, so there you go. You can see that's come out a nice, pretty uniform size. Alright. I don't know if you can see there. It's, there's quite a lot of marks on it. But that is because, let me show you, these back edge, and, come on focus, this back edge and front edge need to be just chamfered off a little bit. I've done those bits so that you don't get any pinching. I just need to do these at the back there and then you get rid of those marks. I'm not too worried on this job because I'm going to run, run the sander over that just to even it down a little bit more. Um, but let's do the other end. And I will just take the chamfer, just chamfer those before I do it, and see if it makes a difference. Oh, it's just that does exactly the same on the other end. Find me mark. Just turn it back into to round. all up again. Right, on the tops I've run some hard facing rods. So you can see I've been hammering that and it's not made an absolute mark on it. Um, because these dies are mild steel, they're EN 32 I think, um, they do distort on the top. Obviously they don't distort on the bottom because you're using it with hot material. Um, so to make them cheap, I just run a run of hard facing rod across the top and they last forever. Just saves you having to use any decent steel and worry about losing the temper out of it with your hot material in the bottom. 
Alright, there you go. And that's much better having just taken a little chamfer off those um, edges. Just got rid of a lot of those marks. So, job done. So, as you can see, I've just run them round on the sander, on the belt sander, just to make them a little bit smaller. I've got my 12mm die, and this is going to be painful because they're a pain to start. I really need a decent die box or something, or a better way of doing this. But it's the same old story, I don't do a lot of it. You know, if I was doing it every day, day in, day out, I'd spend the money on some decent tools but because you don't use the things from one month to the next it's really no point you know I might don't mind spending money out on a, some new dies here and there when I do a job but uh, to spend out on a, a die box or similar something similar it's big bucks anyway I think it's started now I wish I'd had longer handles on the this uh, die holder, but there you go. Drop of the CT90. So you can see now why I wasn't too worried about the marks in that uh, thread, or in the, on the end where the thread was going, because I just ran it around the um, uh, sander, belt sander, because it was slightly oversized because the um, guillotine tool I actually made it for I think half inch so when it was finished it turned out a little bit big so to put this 12 mil die on I've actually I think taken it down to about 11 and a half mil um, but using the guillotine tool to start with was you know brilliant gets you in the ballpark and then literally I just kept twizzling it around on the belt sander and it's come up nice still a little bit tough to work on although this is a new die I don't know whether I've slightly hardened this bar by cooling it out too quick We'll see anyway. We'll get there. Gonna wear me oh, it keeps coming loose this uh tool as well. The die in the holder. I don't quite know why that is. Mind you it's it's about a hundred years old this die holder. Probably not literally, but it's pretty ancient and it's got some nasty old screws in there and that one that one's tight still so that's not moving it's these outside ones that actually hold it in place the middle one adjusts for those of you who don't know there's obviously a lot of you that do um, you can make it slightly cut under or over by because these are split dies, um, you do that middle one up really tight and it will cut under, uh, yeah under, yeah, and then if you do it the other way, push the side ones in and leave the, the other one out, it will cut over. Right, we're nearly there, at last. Got it. Alright, let's see if we can find a nut. Give it a bit of a clean up. Find a nut to fit. So I think I've got plenty about 12mm nuts. Alright, here we go. Oh. 
goes on lovely. Perfect. Cool. Now then, next job. Already done the other end. Didn't want to bore you with that as well. So now I've got to mark it for the gap. Uh, so we're going to find the middle, which is about 125 mil, I think it was off the top of my head. See, I'm mixing me metrics and me imperials again. Now I want uh, about 46 mil gap, or somewhere around there, 45, 46. So that's where that is. Let's check it. Yeah, that's about right. Just check it with the original. That looks pretty good. So, what I've got to do is bend these nice and sharp. I don't know if you notice how sharp the inside of that bend is. And I've been racking my brains for the last week or so. No, not that long few days as to how I'm going to do it and get it right every time on all of them. And I think I've come up with an answer. Some of you will probably throw your hands up in the air in dismay but this is to me is going to be the quickest, most convenient and most accurate way of doing it. I'm just going to cut some of the way through And then hopefully, when I bend it, it'll be spot on. That's the theory. Again, this is why I'm doing this one as a prototype. Because if it all goes the shape of the pair, it don't really matter. Now cut about halfway through there, I think. I'm just gonna I think I'm probably gonna do a little bit more. Just a touch more. Alright, let's see what happens now then. I'm just going to line the cut up with the sharp edge of the vise. See, that's pretty tough still. So let's see if I can find myself a bit of bar to put over the end of there. Pull that round. See what we can find. There we go. Now, I'm not too keen on that. It's splitting, but it's still in one piece. Now let's try the other one. That's going to be tricky to do because it's too long, or well, the vice is too long and it's too narrow. So let's see if we can just get it in the end here. Obviously there is a way of doing it, but it's again slightly more complicated if it won't go in here. But look at that, it will. So we're just going to pull this one down as well. That's gone a little bit twisted. Oh, bum holes. That's split. It's still together, but it's split. I think what I should have done, I shouldn't have cut quite so deep and I've got the right gap though, so that's pleasing. Yeah, spot on. 45mm. Um, yeah, I don't think I should have cut quite so deep and I think what I should have done was heated it to bend those. I think that would have done the trick. Yeah, you see the gap's nice. I think that would have done the trick. So that's what I shall do on the the next ones when I make the, the ones for real. Anyway, they're gonna, these got to be welded up anyway. You know, you didn't think I was going to leave them like that, did you? So I'm just going to weld in there. Um, and as usual, I forgot to turn the camera on, so I've already done one end. So I suddenly realised that I hadn't switched it back on. Um, so I'm just filling in that corner because I couldn't think of a way of, of bending it 
to keep the shape in the corner on the outside and keep that nice and sharp on the inside and do it and get the the gap spot on so this was my my sort of solution and we'll see what happens so I've just got to tidy them up oh, it's gone a bit out of shape so we're just going to give it a little bang I think hold it in the vice and give it a tap get the shape back right sorry of course I'm getting a bit tired I've been at this all day we're in here all day it's getting late now I keep forgetting to move the camera or even turn it on and off as you've seen let's just check the gap again yep yeah, spot on so I'm going to clean them up and then we're nearly there right as you can see I've forgotten to put the camera on again for the cleaning up but trust me I've just run the sander over it, the flap disc and then that little sanding disc again and I'm just running this wheel it's really cool bit of kit I use it for sharpening knives and on stainless and all sorts of jobs it just takes the marks out the grinding marks it's um I don't know what the make is, but it's 180 grit and they last reasonably well, they don't last forever, but they do do a nice job. And again, I don't want to take too many of the, the marks out the outside, I want it to look handmade still. I just want to blend in those corners. I think we've almost got it. If you were doing um you know something you wanted to polish up brightly this is a really good tool to start with and then you can run your polishing mop afterwards over it and it it's, brings it up nicely I think it's Chinese the uh, wheel I'll put a link somewhere for you so you can go and get it, I got them off Amazon right come on focus you there we go no it's gone out of focus again come on focus that's about it anyway you can see there that's blended those corners in nicely and kept those square inside edges and kept the let's call it a patina on the main branches so there you go. Four more of them to make. I don't know quite how else I would have done those corners and kept the width. So that's my pattern. Four more to make and hopefully my man will be happy. So thanks for watching. Oh yeah, all I've got to do is make some more of them. I won't bore you with that because it's literally just a bit of plate with two holes drilled in it. So there you go. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you on the next one.